Hello, and as I mentioned in one of the vlogs, I'm updating my PC. So my original PC spec was a 3820K on an MSI X79A GD65 motherboard with 16 gigabytes of 133 MHz DDR3. Now it was starting to show its age a bit. It was lacking features like USB 3. The pump for the water cooling was getting a bit noisy. And to be honest, I thought it was time to upgrade, especially as I was pretty much not using my PC for gaming or video editing at the moment. So upgrade time it was. So here's what I bought myself. An MSI Gaming M5 motherboard, a 6700K i7 processor, and 16 gigabytes of HyperX Fury Black 2400 MHz DDR4 memory. And to keep that shiny new processor cool, I bought a Corsair H100i version 2. So this is pretty much a direct replacement for my old H100, or so I thought, but we'll get to that later. So the first job was basically disconnect all the cables from the old motherboard, unscrew it and lift it all out in one because basically that's going to go into another PC that I'm going to build in the next few weeks. Next I installed the H100i. Now you'll notice that the radiator is inside the case and the fans are on the top of the case rather than the other way around that it was before. That's because the H100i radiator is thicker than the H100 radiator and wouldn't fit in the top of the case with the actual cover closed. It was bending the cover. Now I'm not a fan of having it this way around. I much prefer having the radiator sat under the cover on top of the case out of the way. But for now I'm going to have to run it this way around basically just so I can test the motherboard and do all the benchmarking and make sure everything works. So now I just slip the motherboard in, it mounts in exactly the same way that the old one did, attach the cooler and start attaching the cables. Now the cables are just attaching any old way because basically I just want to get it up and running, powered up, make sure it works, benchmark it, make sure all the cooling works and then I can basically then fiddle around with all the cables. Next I install the graphics card and attach all the drives. Now the graphics card is exactly the same as it was before although in this build there's going to be no sound card because this motherboard has a much better audio processor inbuilt so I'm going to be using the onboard audio and you'll notice on the right hand side you can actually see one of the front case fans. Now that's because I've removed the second hard drive bays. I'm only going to be having three drives in this build. There's going to be two 500 gigabyte SSDs and one 3 terabyte HD. So I'm removing the 240 gigabyte SSD that used to be my Windows drive because that's going into the second PC when I build it. And as I'm only using three drives, I only need one drive bay. So there it is, all roughly put together. The cabling's a nightmare, but like I say, this is basically just to test everything works, run some benchmarks and make sure that the thing's keeping itself cool. And lo and behold, it boots up into the BIOS at the first time of asking. Now I'm not going to be doing any complicated overclocking on this PC. I didn't on my last one. So I tweak a few BIOS settings and then basically let it boot up into Windows. Now this is booting up off the old 240GB drive just so that I can check it out and because it's already got all my software loaded onto it and it boots straight into Windows. So joy of joys, I've put the PC together and it worked first time of asking. So once a new Windows was up and running properly I then decided to run some benchmarks and the first benchmark I ran was Cinebench. Now I'd already run all these benchmarks on the 3820K so I had something to compare them all to. Cinebench is probably the best benchmark for actually running to see what your processor is like. And on these results in orange you can see the 6700K and outlined in red you can see the 3820K. Now I did run this a few times for each processor and the 6700K averaged 940 and the 3820K averaged 685. So in terms of the Cinebench score, that's a 37% increase with the new processor. So it would appear it's doing its job. 
From Cinebench I move over to 3D Mark and the Firestrike DirectX 11 test. Now this tests graphics processing and physics processing. So this is a good overall PC test. Now I'm going to round these results up just to make it a bit easier to understand. So for the graphics score you shouldn't really see much of a change because the graphics card hasn't changed. It's a 980 Ti in both systems. So the 3820K scored 19,500 and the 6700K scored around 20,000. So there's a bit of an increase but not much. However, when you come to the physics scores, there's a massive jump. 10,000 for the 3820K, 14,000 for the 6700K. And that pretty much mirrors what we saw in the Cinebench scores. In Cinebench we got a 37% increase and in 3D Mark we've seen around a 40% increase. So the actual computing power of the 6700K looks to be about 35-40% better than the 3820K. And as you can see here on the world rankings I've gone up from better than 91% of PCs to better than 95% of PCs. So as you can see, with the 980 Ti inside it, my old PC was no slouch. But when it comes to pure number crunching power, the 6700K is scoring around 40% better than the 3820K. The final benchmark that I ran was Heaven, and Heaven is basically a pure graphics benchmark, and there's almost no difference, because all this is really testing is the 980 Ti. The motherboard is slightly better, and it seems to process information to the graphics card slightly quicker, but there's not really any noticeable difference. Now the advantage that Heaven does have is that you can just leave it running. So what I did was monitor the temperatures of my PC before running Heaven, and then monitor them after I'd run it for an hour. Now if you look at the clock speed, you'll see that all the cores here are running at 4400 MHz. That's because I've activated the very basic overclocking that's built into the motherboard, just to give it a bit more load. The motherboard temperatures have gone up from 30 degrees to around 40 degrees and the core temperatures have gone up from around 25 degrees on average to around 35 degrees. They peaked at around 55 degrees which I think is when the H100i kicks in and steps up to its next level. So processor temperatures no problem even after running graphics test for an hour. If we look at the graphics card, you can see that when it's idle, it's running at 30 degrees, the fans are off, it's drawing almost no power, and the GPU utilisation goes to a maximum of 4% when it's just sitting in Windows doing nothing. After an hour of running Heaven on extreme settings, the fans are on, but they're only on about 46%, temperatures have gone up to 67 degrees, and that's with the GPU utilisation at 100%. However, you'll notice the GPU power is still only at 68%. So this thing hasn't ramped itself up and started overclocking. It's still basically ticking over, even running heaven at extreme levels. And that's why I don't bother overclocking graphics cards or processors really. I use what's inbuilt. So turbo mode on the processors, and the MSI turbo mode on the graphics cards, those are fine. But the only real reason to start pushing overclocks to extremes is basically just to test how far you can push an overclock. In terms of real world applications and gaming, it really doesn't make a lot of difference. So I don't overclock and I just leave things to run quietly and coolly. So that was it, that's the testing of my new PC. Now you'll notice from this picture that it's actually a lot neater. And that's what I'll cover in the next video, which is basically what mods I did to the case to get everything working properly, and how I cable managed it and basically made it a bit more presentable. And that's going to be some shaky video rather than still images. So, thanks for watching.